welcome back. Stasis 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And uh, today's blade, I got in on a trade with my buddy Zelric. And uh, it is of the Ace Biblio. This guy comes in right around $175. And Ace is a uh, more affordable um, option to the Giant Mouse's um, des designs which are made up of designs from both the Jasper Voxnays and um, Jen Zanzo. Both top-notch uh, knife designers, knife makers, that wanted to bring more affordable uh, options to their designs. And I am a, I'm a huge Vox fan, and I like, I like some of um, Anzo's stuff as well. And... I handled this guy at Blade Show last year, and for some reason I passed on it. And um, of course, I waited till the, these micarta ones were gone before I decided I really wanted one. So my buddy Zelric helped that out. So let's get some quick specs out of the way. You're looking at six and seven eighths inches long, so it's not a not a big big guy by any means. Um, you have a uh, blade length of two and seven eighths inches, so it's going to be right there for those people who have the three inch uh, and under blade restrictions, so that makes it awesome. You have a grip area of three and a half inches long, and this guy is a little bit, little bit thicker than your average, your average monkey here, and it's at 0.5 eighths of an inch, and let's close it up. Your width at the widest point um, is 1.4 inches, and uh, your blade stock is 0.115, so it's 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 a little thick. And um, your thinness behind the thinnest portion of the edge is 20 thousandths at 20 degrees per side sharpened bevel. So let's get a close up look at this sexy monster. You have this nice drop point blade with lots of belly. You have a very light tumbled stone wash reflective finish on there. I like that. You can see my ah, you can see my my face in there if you look. Whoop, whoop, there I am. Um, I really like that that style of uh, finish. And you're rocking Bowler M390. One of the most premium steels they have out there. I really like it, especially for your edge retention. Um, you have very minimal billboarding, nothing on this side, completely sterile. And all you have on this side is the Ace logo or the Giant Mouse logo and Ace on the side. And I don't know, I don't see, I don't, I don't think the blade steel is marked on here. At least I haven't seen it. Um... You have almost a full flat grind. You have a little portion of a flat for any of those fixed angled systems out there. You're good to go. You have a nice, generous sharpening choil, or if you have skinny fingers like myself, you can use it as a forward choil, but you do need to be careful because that is sharpened edge right there. Um, even my skinny fingers, it just barely fits, but it does work in a pinch. You have this blade hole that has been chamfered. So no sharp edges on that blade hole. You have a oh so sweet crown spine. Absolutely love that. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that uh, these are produced by Viper knives. I'm pretty sure, and they do such a good job of chamfering. I mean, of crowning spines. Uh, one thing that that you don't see that often is well placed jimping, because a lot of times whenever you're grabbing a knife. You're not grabbing, especially something small like this, you're not grabbing it back here. Like they, they usually put jimping right here on the back. But whenever I come up on it, that's exactly where my thumb hits. And it's it's not no crazy, you know, jimping that's gonna rip your finger, but it's very fine and it it, it does it, it does its purpose. It locks my finger in there and it's a good indexing point. I, I absolutely love that. Let's close this guy up. That blade hole is accessible. I can spotty flick it. I can slow roll it. And I can thwag it out. That was, that was, God, that was, ah, that was a dud too. There you go. So there you go. There's your opening methods. And you can close it up. You can also see you have a very, very tiny flipper tab right there that has some nice jimps. You got the light switch jimps. And then you have a flat portion up there if you want to push button it. Let's see, your light switch, 
That was pretty weak. And your push button was also pretty weak. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the star of the show for me is this handle material. You got some canvas, OD green canvas micarta. Absolutely love micarta. It gives me a great tactile feeling, especially whenever it gets wet. It still gets grippy. And um, they did a good job of 3D contouring it. And I like that extra thickness in this one, this handle, because the the grip fills out, being that it's a smaller handle, really fills out, locks in that hand. Um, and one reason, another reason why I like my card besides the tactility is how it how it starts to look over time. It's it kind of it starts to darken up from the hand, the oils from your hand and dirt and crud, but it gives it its own unique look. Um, nobody's really gonna look the same, but if that does bug you. You can clean this off with some Dawn or something like that, and it'll pull the oils off of there. But it's going to eventually come back to that as anytime, unless your hands don't sweat. Um, you have sta a standard T8 Torx uh, bit right there. And as you can see, it's nice and well done right there. You have uh, T6 body screws and a T8 for your, um, the same as your pivot for your, pocket clip pocket clip is tip up left or right handed deep carry wire clip absolutely love the clip there there's a uh, wire clip is is a, a spider co wire clip on steroids nice and beefy um i don't think it'll spring out that easily let me just give you a, a look this is spider co's wire clip and look how stout look how stout that one is nice and chunky as a monkey um Let's see, you have a lanyard hole that has a big old barrel uh, tube there for you so to, to pass right through. Yeah, pretty darn good blade to handle ratio. Um, you have these nice barrel spacers and um, flow through construction. Let's open this guy up. You don't have any skeletonization in there. At all with your stainless liners you have easy access to this lock bar and that nice jimping right there is not harsh on the finger but it definitely gives you some uh traction to easily disengage the lock bars it's a pleasure to uh, uh unlock this lock they're very nice very nice um let's see so there there you go there's the the outward appearance of the knife um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some size comparisons and a weight on this guy, and I'll talk about, I just have like one complaint, and, and it's really, I mean, it's, I don't know, it might not be a complaint for you, but let's see what it looks like next to the Spyderco Power 3. It's just a little bit shorter than the Power 3. Uh, let's look at another Vox design, the Pelarge. And the Pelarge is just a little bit shorter, not by much, but... You can definitely see the Vox influence in there. Uh, let's see. The Ferrum Forge Master Drop Falcon. These two are really close inside. They're about identical in length. The the uh, the Biblio might be just a tad. Yeah, it's a tad bit longer. Uh, you have a little bit longer of a handle. About, let's see. Yeah, just about the same cutting edge. You have a little bit more cutting edge on the Biblio. Um, two more got the best tech uh, pebble and I just picked out the pebble because um, they have very similar blade shapes let me pull it down here that glare is killing me there you go look at the blade shapes very very reminiscent um, you just have a wider profile on the biblio and one more last one just because they're pretty much identical in size is the Isham Pleroma or We Pleroma and those two are pretty much identical in size or in length. So, what are my nitpicks, complaints? <laughs> Not much. There was only one so far that I've noticed. And I still got to do some testing and stuff with this guy. But my only complaint so far was this small flipper tab. Because due, and, and this might only be this my variation of this knife. But because they had to put this little tiny pocket pecker, whatever you want to call it, it had a really stout detent to where it flipped pretty nicely. I ain't gonna lie, it had a, a pretty good flipping action, 
but I prefer my thumb holes over my flipper. And if I had to do away with one, it would be the flipper. And I can still, as you can see, I can still flip it. It's just not good. If I want to use some wrist action, it's a little bit better. A little light switch action. I could still do it. And I could probably fix it a little bit more. But when I got it, there was no use in this thumb hole at all. Like, it was impossible for me to do. And um, so I decided I wanted to be able to use that thumb hole. So I, I, I tuned the detent enough to where I could comfortably use the... Uh, the, the thumb hole and not gonna shake out easily and if I wanted to use that flipper I still could and I, like I said I might tune it back and I plan on doing a video because I always have people ask me how I tune my detents and doing this and this so if y'all are interested I, I plan on doing a video on how to tune a knife and or the way I tune a knife whenever I have I want something geared to the way I like it so uh, ergonomics on this guy is really, really good too. Very comfortable in this grip. This grip, this grip's pretty good. The grip I never use is okay. Uh, my pinch grip is very good. So overall, I'm enamored with the knife. I, I, I like it. I, I don't know why it took me so long to get this guy. I'm glad I did pick it up. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. And I'll see y'all guys on the next one. Peace. Oh wait, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And what is it called, Bella? Bobby. She my daughter wanted wanted to, wanted me to let y'all know that this play button, its name's Bobby. So y'all can refer tell her how cool Bobby is down in the comment section below. Cause y'all are rock stars. Peace!